right now on 5 on your side at 10. You'll notice the uptick in humidity tomorrow and it stays dry with average temperatures for August. But how long will the dry weather last? Pushing for answers. A family's dog put down without permission. Tonight, our I-team looks into why St. Louis County is restricting information from coming to life. But first, as FEMA continues to assess the damage from historic flooding, we're still hearing stories of heartbreak. This is my life's work, and so it's like cutting out my heart. Federal disaster crews out spreading out all across the St. Louis area. They're working every day to get flood victims the help they desperately need. Thank you for joining us at 10. I'm Brent Solomon. New tonight, five on your side's Mercedes McKay followed a FEMA crew in Ferguson today and has more on their relief efforts. For Frederick Tussie, these crates full of vinyl are more than just something to listen to. I've been collecting records for over 40 years. It's his passion and his love. Oh, there's all kinds of stuff in here. But in just one morning, almost all of it was taken away from him. This is my life's work. And so it's like cutting out my heart. About three feet of water filled Tussie's basement, destroying more than 40,000 of what he calls his little time machines. It just kills me to lose all these records because that's all I do is collect records and listen to them and study them. You may look at this dumpster and all you probably see is pieces of trash, but for people here in Ferguson, this is all their livelihoods. We can still see flooring and pieces of furniture that they'll never be able to get back. All they have left is those memories with them. This is why FEMA is in the area and all across St. Louis trying to help everyone directly impacted by the flood. We've seen people who's lives have been turned upside down by this. We see people going through a really tough time in their lives, and we're trying to help as many people as we can as quickly as possible. John Mills with FEMA says the federal agency has already provided more than $1.2 million in grants to individuals impacted. He says as more damage inspections take place, more money is approved daily. We're working with every household on a case-by-case -case basis. Everyone went through the flooding together, but everyone's exact situation is unique. Unfortunately for Tussie though, his lost items are irreplaceable. Money is one thing, but the records themselves are worth more than any money, and that's a shame. In Ferguson, Mercedes McKay, five on your side. FEMA will be deploying more workers to the area to help victims. That agency is hoping to open more disaster recovery centers in the coming days. Flood assistance from the Red Cross and FEMA are still available. Text the word HELP to 314-425-5355. We'll send you a link with more information. It's a beautiful night to enjoy a ball game. Let's go ahead and take a look over Bush Stadium. Check that out. Less than an hour ago, a heartbreaking loss, though, for the Cardinals, who took on the Brewers. Enjoy these comfortable temperatures tonight, Jim, because what? Heat and humidity coming back tomorrow. Yeah, but you know, just for one day. So it's amazing how we're going to go back to cooler weather, Brent, uh, through a good part of next week. But check this out, that full moon tonight, so it's good for the bike ride, and, and it almost looks like Halloween, doesn't it? This is the 13th of August, of course. And there it is, right in between the arch there, the full moon mixed with some cloud cover, so it looks orangey as it's coming up. And, of course, there's Bush Stadium and 10 innings tonight. Uh, it's still a great game. 87 for tomorrow. So tomorrow's game is at 1.15 first pitch. 89 at 4 o'clock. And like Brent said, you'll notice that humidity tomorrow for sure. Our hottest day in the low 90s in some areas. Coming up, the full weather forecast and a chance of rain. Brent? All right, Jim, we'll see you in a bit. New tonight, construction is now underway at Amazon's Edwardsville Warehouse after an EF3 tornado struck there some eight months ago. When it happened, Amazon said it would eventually rebuild the 1 million square foot building. Now we can tell you one wall has been rebuilt and another is now under construction. No word yet when the work will be done so that the warehouse can reopen. Six workers died when that building's roof collapsed. Two of those workers' families and a group of Amazon drivers have filed suit against the company. 
Tonight, our I team uncovering new allegations into a St. Louis County animal shelter. Following our investigation, attorneys say county government officials took unprecedented steps to try to restrict more info from surfacing. Tonight, investigative reporter Paula Vassan breaks it all down. We've spent weeks reporting on a problem Erin Bullfin hopes never happens to anyone else. She took her dog to St. Louis County Animal Care and Control after her dog bit her daughter. She was following the rules, bringing her dog in to be examined and quarantined. Soon after, she discovered her dog Daisy was euthanized without the family's permission. And St. Louis County has recently taken steps to try and prevent her from speaking up. Erin Bolfin believes her dog's death in December 2019 was a result of lack of organization, too few resources, and mismanagement at the county-run animal shelter. She filed this lawsuit against the facility. We interviewed a former employee who filed another lawsuit, alleging wrongful termination and retaliation for speaking I up about what she calls deplorable conditions. Um, Since our investigations into the shelter, St. Louis County has taken steps that attorney Mark Pedroli calls completely so unconstitutional. KSDK's reporting in this matter clearly sent a shockwave through St. Louis County government because almost immediately afterwards they filed the gag order trying to prevent um, the attorneys from talking to KSDK. A judge denied that motion seeking a gag order. We have called, texted, and sent multiple emails to St. Louis County officials for their reaction. St. Louis County Councilor Beth Orwick tells us she won't comment on pending litigation. Paula Vassan reporting. It is back to school season across the bi-state and earlier today, Annie Malone held its first ever family fest. Families gathered in North St. Louis to receive free school supplies and haircuts, physicals, vaccines and a whole lot more. Kids also got to enjoy food from a variety of food trucks and there were even carnival games there. And hundreds of local families also ready for the first day of school thanks to the Beyond the Backpack school fair that happened in Normandy. It was a one-stop shop for all your back-to-school needs. Community organizations like Beyond Housing on hand to offer families additional resources. This community cares about you. This school district cares about you. This community cares about you. And we want you to be successful. Organizers made sure to include some fun and games to keep children entertained. There was a DJ, a petting zoo, an ice cream truck, and a whole lot more. The first day of classes, by the way, in Normandy and in St. Louis is August 22nd. The investigation into former President Donald Trump. Tonight, a closer look at what FBI agents found inside his Mar-a-Lago estate. As COVID cases rise, many people wondering what are the long-term effects? Our Verify team answers your questions about long COVID. A cool down's on the way. Also limited rain chances. I'll time them out coming up. New details into the FBI's investigation of former President Donald Trump. The New York Times reports that a Trump lawyer signed a sworn declaration in June saying there were no longer documents marked as classified at Mar-a-Lago. But someone later tipped authorities that there were still classified materials there. And that prompted the FBI to conduct a search on Monday. A newly released warrant shows agents seized 11 sets of classified documents. The evidence we get now almost daily seems to confirm that there was certainly adequate probable cause for that U.S. magistrate to sign the warrant. Top Democrats in Congress today asked the director of national intelligence to investigate the potential damage to national security. While Republicans continue to call on the Justice Department to release the sealed documents that lay out the FBI's rationale for that search. Tonight, author Salman Rushdie has been taken off a ventilator and is now able to talk. That's according to his agent. A New Jersey man accused in the attack in upstate New York pleaded not guilty to attempted murder and assault charges. He was denied bail. Rushdie, the renowned author of the Satanic Verses, was stabbed on Friday as he was preparing to give a lecture. 
An emotional reunion today at Barnes Jewish Hospital. The parents and family of Cheston Miller came from Tennessee to hear their son's heartbeat for the first time since he died. His heart was donated to St. Louis and Darren Garmer. Garmer had a major heart attack three years ago and needed a new heart. He says he's a better person since having that transplant. To me, their soul is attached to that, so you have to you have to live with that soul within you as well. So I opened arms, hugged the soul of Cheston, and with all the love in, in myself, I accepted the heart in him in my life. Cheston's parents have received letters of thanks from other people who received his other organs. And Brent, check this out. Still watching that almost full moon, 97% full there by the arch. So the moonlight ramble is tonight. Good, good weather for the bike ride. It's 82 degrees right now. Coming up, we'll talk about one hot day and humid day before we cool down again. Tonight, St. Louis County is seeing some of the highest numbers of daily new COVID cases since February. That's despite being at a medium transmission level. To stay vigilant, the St. Louis County Health Department is now expanding opportunities for you to get vaccinated. It's expanded its hours and will host two special weekend clinics, including one that happened earlier today. Parents will be able to bring their kids to a public health center to get either COVID-19 shots or your standard back to school shots. His doctor wasn't able to get him in until September, and I found out that they were having, um, they were taking walk-ins for the vaccine. The process is simple. All you need is a copy of your shot record. The cost is free. If you miss today's clinic, the extended hours will run Monday through Friday through September 17th, except for special days like Labor Day. Well, the number of COVID cases is on the rise again, and so are fears about long COVID. That's a condition where people experience long-term effects following an infection. Arian Daytail and the National Verify team are here to answer some of the most common questions about it. Nearly 90 million people in the U.S. have tested positive for COVID-19 since the pandemic began. Some of those people continue to experience symptoms or complications for months afterwards. It's a condition called long COVID. Several Verify readers have emailed the team with questions about long COVID. So let's answer them using these sources. First up, what is long COVID? According to the CDC and the Mayo Clinic, a person is suffering from long COVID if they continue to experience symptoms more than four weeks after their COVID-19 diagnosis. The WHO adds that symptoms of long COVID last for at least two months and cannot be explained with an alternative diagnosis. So how do you know if you have long COVID? According to Dr. Ilham Masaudi Powers, an immunology expert at the University of Kentucky College of Medicine. Unfortunately, there isn't a really good way to test for long COVID, right? It's all subjective and it's all people reporting their symptoms. So what are some common symptoms of long COVID? The CDC says that many long COVID symptoms are similar to those caused by an acute infection of COVID-19, like joint or muscle pain, diarrhea or stomach pain. Other symptoms that people have reported include fatigue, shortness of breath, brain fog and anxiety, according to Dr. Natalia Kovarubias Eckert, medical director of the post COVID rehabilitation program at Providence St. Jude Medical Center in California. And finally, do you have to have had a bad case of COVID to get long COVID? According to Dr. Kovarubias Eckert, the answer is no. We are seeing it throughout the spectrum. But Johns Hopkins Medicine and the CDC say long COVID appears to be more common in patients with initial severe illness, though it can affect people who had mild symptoms too. With your Verify, I'm Ariande Till. So what would you like for us to verify? Reach out to us on Facebook, Twitter, or email verify at ksdk.com. Well, tonight, the 58th annual Moonlight Ramble is underway. This is in South St. Louis. Thousands of bike riders are taking over the streets of the Grove to enjoy an evening cruise under the light of the full moon. There's also an after ride party with music, food and drinks. You know, not a bad night for an event like this. Uh, yeah. I know, can imagine. Beautiful. Yeah. It's in the 80s still and Brent uh, tonight a little bit warmer staying in the 70s or going down only into the 70s. And you can see that full moon tonight right by the arch. In fact, just about to leave 
the shot here. So let's take a look at another one. This is from 100 above the park. Camera shaking just a little bit, but there it is, the full moon. Just a fantastic look at that. 97% illuminated tonight, and it is still a very warm night. It's going to be perfect weather for the bike ride. 82 right now, and it feels like 83 because that humidity is a little bit higher, about 49%, dew point 61. And there it is at south southwest wind at about nine miles an hour. It stays up a little bit tonight and keeps that breeze going all the way into tomorrow. All right, 89 for that high today, 67 for the overnight low, and 89 and 70 are the averages. So pretty close to that, the record 103. So a warm front is pushing through right now. So that's why tonight's a little bit warmer than last night. Definitely down in the 70s around St. Louis. And then here comes a cold front, but really it's just another wind shift line. So it's going to come through here dry. And let me show you the overnight lows tonight first, and then we'll talk about the wind. So 71 for Sullivan, 72 for Chesterfield, Shiloh about 70 for Lowe's. So definitely warmer. And here it is the wind. When you see the wind barbs more out of the south here at about 430 in the morning. So south wind until we get to the early morning hours about 8 a.m. You'll see more of a westerly shift as that cold front makes its way through here and it comes through here dry. And then by 1030 a.m. There it is that northerly wind. The wind barbs coming through here. And when you see the yellow, some of the wind as high as about 10, 15 miles an hour. So a little bit of a breeze. Again, very dry for tomorrow, so we'll call it partly sunny to mostly sunny. And then as we head into Monday, it's partly sunny to mostly cloudy, but dry. Then here comes Tuesday, a chance of showers, and look at that. Thunderstorms definitely in the area by Tuesday. Rain and thunder, some of that heavy. Maybe some of us a little bit over an inch expected. And then 10-day forecast showing cooler weather, mainly 80s this upcoming week, but even Tuesday when that rain comes in, we're in the 70s. All right. Well, Jim, keep us posted on that. Yeah, you bet. Thank you much. Ahmad is here now with sports. Right. Playoff type atmosphere down at Bush Stadium early on. We're going to head to Bush and tell you how things wrapped up and hear all of that post game reaction coming up next. Adam Wainwright versus Corbin Burns. This is what we call a big boy matchup as the Cardinals inch one step closer towards October baseball. Before today's game, the Redbirds held a one and a half game lead on the Brew Crew for first place in the NL Central. Adam Wainwright had his sights set on extending that lead and the Cards nine game home winning streak. Early on, he looked good. Later on in the contest, he would look just as good as Waino would pick up several K's on the day. Now he did have a no hitter roll into the seventh inning, but with two outs, Andrew McCutcheon, well, he decided to ruin things. Fans, well, they still applauded Wado for the effort, as you know they would. Nolan Gorman had his back, though. He said, let's try and get Wado this victory. He lines one to left center. It would score Paul Goldschmidt as the Cardinals could taste victory after that one, but Wado would make one more mistake, and Urias makes him pay a solo shot. That was in the game to extras, and the Brewers would add two more off of Giovanni Gallegos, and the Birds end up losing a close one, three to two. Now, prior to the game, the 1982 World Series champion Cardinals team was celebrated for its 40th anniversary. All-time greats like Ozzie Smith, Willie McGee, Keith Hernandez, and Jim Cott were in attendance for the ceremony. Cott was inducted into the 2022 Hall of Fame class and says he owes a large part of that to the 82 team. When we win the World Series, uh, no player, no professional player in any professional sport has had to play 24 years before getting a championship ring. Uh, Ray Bork was 22. I know Ray Bork, the hockey player. And so, you know, those aren't records of accomplishment by me. They're just an example of how honored I was to be a part of that team. You remember this guy? Jordan Walker was one of the most talked about prospects for a high-end package deal at the end of the trade deadline. The Cardinals wouldn't deal him, and this is why. He's currently ranked sixth among all MLB prospects, and last night he collected a career-high four hits for Springfield AA. He has a 309 batting average with big things ahead. Mom, I'm going to the major leagues. <laughs> I'm going, Mama. I'm going, Mom. I promise. I promise, Mom. I'm going. 
Talk about a feel good story. After spending a decade in the minor leagues, when Bernard finally got the call up to play in the big leagues, the 31 year old shared the moment with his mom. And then in his first big league game, he recorded his first big league hit, his first stolen base, and scored his first run, all with his mom in attendance. A moment the two will never forget. Now, the NFL is one month away from kickoff, but we already have some familiar storylines as we head into the season. Pat Mahomes and the offense looks good for the Chiefs. One drive, one touchdown for the crew. The Bears, oh man, all you fans in St. Louis, I hope you're ready for another year of screaming at your television and wondering if they can stop anyone as they give up another touchdown. But in all fairness, you know, they did come back and win the game for those who care about the final score in preseason. Now, be sure to join us Sunday night at 1030 following the newscast for Sports Plus. We're joined by Worldwide Technology Raceway owner Curtis Francois to discuss the upcoming IndyCar race in our town. Plus, we learned the story behind inspiring athletes on the Gateway Archers beatball team. All that coming up Sunday night after the newscast. Tomorrow. All right, Amon. Yep. Thanks for that. No problem. All right, Jim. Final look. Yeah, so the IndyCar race is next weekend. The weather looks pretty good. Just a slight chance of a shower or storm. But before that, so Sunday, that's tomorrow, 90 and humid. And uh, we'll call it partly sunny to mostly sunny. Then cooler Monday, 84 and dry. Until we get to late Monday night into Tuesday, rain and some thunder, some downpour. 77 and then we're clearing up by Wednesday and into the next weekend staying in the 80s. So worth keeping in mind a humid day tomorrow. Yes. All right. We've been warned. <laughs> Thanks you for your company. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Have a great night.